Hi, everyone. My name is Paul Dixon. Welcome to Film Vets. I'm with co-host Dan Young. Today, we're going to be talking about James Earl Jones. <laughs> Let me guess. You like Star Wars. <laughs> you know, I've been in other movies. Who in the hell ever said, I got to like you? My name is Frank Cuso. Commander, tear this ship apart until you found those plans and bring me the passengers. I want them alive. I'm King Joffrey Jofer, ruler of Zamunda. That's really nice of you, but that ball really is signed by Babe Ruth. So is this one, with the rest of the 1927 Yankees. What is steel compared to the hand that wheels it? Hey, look, man, I ain't fighting for no race. I ain't redeeming nobody. My mama told me Mr. Lincoln done that. Ain't that why you shot him? This field, this game, it's a part of our past, Ray. It reminds us of all that once was good. And it could be again. He is a veteran and a celebrity. I'm also wearing a Star Wars shirt in spirit of things. I don't really know much about his history beyond the fact that he had some trouble bringing out his voice when he was younger. And that was something that he dealt with. But the iconic voice of Darth Vader, he's got mm -hmm. multiple films and awards. He's Mufasa from The Lion King, one of the best, if not the best Disney movie ever made, in my opinion. You know, there's just, there's a long list of his <laughs> work and I'm excited to learn more about him today. Yeah, absolutely. Well, he is a very predominant voice actor because of his kind of vocal training when he was younger he actually used that vocal training to get out of a stutter beyond that did you know that james earl jones was going to college for medicine he was going to be a doctor oh really i knew he was struggling yeah. with the stutter for a long time and I, that was something he overcame but i didn't know about him going into medicine that's interesting and during his pre-med he actually went in on an rotc scholarship and he found that he thrived better in the structured environment of the military so he he wasn't drafted or, or you know told he had to go in or anything to that effect he thrived so much in that environment that he decided that that was for him. Now, James Earl Jones is just hardcore. The more you just start descending down into this, he became a ranger. He specialized in survival. He set up a cold weather survival school. It's crazy. Wow. The, the more you dig into it the, and find of his military history, he was a second lieutenant because, you know, he was commissioned out of college he got his bachelor's in pre-med and decided to, to move in towards just being more active in the military. While he was in school, he was on the Pershing rifle team. Like, I, I don't know if you've seen any ROTC exhibitions where you've got, you know, your formation marching, you've got rifle exhibition, color guard, stuff like that. It, yeah, I've, I've it seen It was those. kind yeah. of like that, but it was like top tier and he hmm. excelled. In his first year of school, he basically didn't really talk much. He, he calls it his mute year, but he credits his English teacher, Donald Crouch, who discovered that he had a gift for writing poetry and helped him end his silence. His teacher urged him to challenge his reluctance to speak through reading poetry. So it's learning poetry, which is interesting because once he got out of the military, he went on to become a very predominant Shakespearean stage actor. He kind of threw back from early on where he used poetry to break through that stutter and that silence. One thing I, I did want to touch on, just how absolutely hardcore this guy is. I have a direct quote he actually gave the army in an interview about his time when he was setting up that survival school, the cold weather survival school. Yeah. He's quoted as saying, our regiment was established as a training unit to train in the bitter cold weather and the rugged terrain of the Rocky Mountains. I took to the physical challenge, so much so that I wanted to stay there, testing myself in that awesome environment, mastering the skills of survival, 
I love the austere beauty of the mountains and the exhilaration of the weather and the altitude. That dude thrived in a survivalist environment. He set up the school to the letter. He absolutely excelled. But whenever it came time for him to move forward in his military career, basically when his, his basic enlistment was up, he was posed with a question if there was anything he felt like he needed to do or wanted to do on the outside of the military. And he contemplated that for a little bit. And he eventually settled on the fact that he wanted to try following in his father's footsteps. Now, his father, did you know, Robert Earl Jones was an actor as well. He was a stage actor. Really? Yes. Oh, so he had it in his blood. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> That's cool. When he was making some transitions out, he started off as like a carpenter working on a basically a stage carpenter in 1953. Then from 55 to 57, he was an actor and a stage manager. And that's when he performed his first portrayal of Othello. He just kept building up from there into different plays. King Lear, Midsummer Night's Dream, Hamlet. And that was building up all the way into the 60s. And then in the 60s, he started to dabble in film and actually that's where he had his first role in 1964 and i think you're gonna love this do you know what his first role was I his first like movie role it's I, it's I, I so really perfect know. i th i think wow. it's once once you realize it, you're just going to light up stanley kubrick's dr strangelove oh my that was God. his first movie <laughs> who did he play in that was he he was one of the pilots uh, the, of a the... young lieutenant Lothar Zog, the B-52 huh. bombardier. The B-52 bomber. Yeah, that I was remember him. that. Wow, what a great first role to come yep. into. Uh, that's th crazy, that right? Yeah, that's a classic. I love that movie so much. And I do remember seeing him in the film. I didn't know it was his first movie, though. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, that was that was his first movie. Now, he had done a lot of stage work prior to that. And he, you mm. know, had, had a lot of practice. But... Once he got on film, then it really opened the floodgates. From there, he he just was everywhere, eventually picking up the, the roles that we know him the most today for Vader's voice, for... he's He's been in so much. <laughs> like, so Love much. It. If you... Just mildly Google it. It's it's just this huge list. Um, I, something that really and, sticks out to me was Coming to America, where he played the. Oh the king. yes, yes, that yeah. was awesome, and that he reprised it role. in Coming to America. Not a fan of that movie, but I always enjoy seeing him. And I didn't see Coming to America till a couple of years ago for the first time. I don't know why I never really? seen it before, but yeah. And God, one of the funniest movies I've ever seen in my life. He's such a commanding presence when he walks into the room that putting him mm -hmm. as a king it makes total sense and also later on when he played the king and the lion king his voice makes such a difference in that film for me because there's so much love that's put into his protection for simba and the way he rules his land with also this compassion it, you feel that in everything he said and did it elevates everything about that film for me there are a lot of people that will say oh yeah i remember this actor a lot from my childhood or i remember this actor over here from my childhood, they they immediately associate, they can remember what movies and everything like that. And some people, I, I don't know how I want to say this, but for me, honestly, it's James Earl Jones coming up from the 90s. He was in The Hunt for Red October, Patriot Games, The Sandlot, Clear and Present Danger, like, and, you know, Mufasa and The Lion King. And that, that dude has just done so much work and it, it just hasn't slowed, like, it, it just hasn't stopped yeah i think the only thing that you know I, I and he deserves this more than anyone is that mm -hmm. he's decided to retire the voice of yes. Darth Vader. as sad as that may be uh, and no one deserves it more i mean the man's been working in the industry forever and mm -hmm. i i really hope he's just enjoying retirement now one I, I, one thing i do like about about that agreement is the fact that he yeah. has agreed with disney that they can use an ai engine and right. already you know samples of his voice so even though it is synthetic it's still his voice being kind of rendered out so 
even well after he's gone, anytime we get Vader on the screen and hear him, it will still be, in essence, James Earl Jones. It will always be James Earl Jones. That's quite um, the and, and that's one thing, one thing that I do love about that deal. Yeah, it sucks that he's retiring, especially the voice, but it will always be his voice. I think that that is amazing, especially no, knowing it's... just how hardcore he was in real life. It yeah. totally lines up with Vader. <laughs> <laughs> it was a real life Vader. <laughs> I remember there was an interview with him where he spoke about the reveal about, you know, being Luke Skywalker's father. He was reading the script and it said, I'm his father. And he said, he's lying. There's no way. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, another thing I know you wanted to point out was that he had a huge cameo on the show Big Bang Theory about that yes that i was gonna ask you what your favorite scene was uh like out of every like your favorite role and i i mean since we're already here i wanted to say that is hands down i think my favorite like cameo where he's playing himself i That's think that great. that episode is amazing That's because so he, cool. he you know you you read about his history and how absolutely hardcore he was he also has you know just this massive playful side and a sense of humor that episode it is so funny great yeah i i i'm gonna go back and watch it because i just i want to see that again what is your favorite you say, james earl jones performance i have to say off the top of my head i i mean it always darth vader i mean you can't get more iconic than that yes. one of the greatest villains in movie history and he's played it and he's owned it and he'll own it way mm -hmm. after he's gone I, like you said it, there's just nothing comparatively. I mean, I would say maybe Mufasa and Lion King would be a close second, but Darth Vader is on another level. And I, I would oh, yeah. love it. I know I know he did a return to do the voice for the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, which I believe actually integrated that AI system you mentioned earlier. There's a scene where Obi-Wan cuts off some of Darth Vader's helmet and we see Hayden Christensen underneath and he's talking and we get both his voice and James Earl Jones back and forth between those two. It's such a cool scene. I love that so much. Anyways, Darth Vader is my number one. What's your number one? Oh, the hands down the Big Bang Theory episode. <laughs> okay, like, performance-wise, just... though. <laughs> performance. Oh, okay. So so not yeah, James Earl Jones, the man. Not playing like, himself. James Earl Jones, the... Well, you took Vader, which really crushes me. You can say Vader. It's okay to say Vader. I understand if it is. I mean, come on. I, I love Vader, especially at like the end of Rogue One. Like that is <laughs> that is my favorite scene. So he's walking down a hallway and he's cutting people in into pieces. And there's one guy and he just lifts him up and cuts him in half. And I remember after we saw that movie, that's that is all I fixated on. And just walking For out of the theater just talking about it. For a month, you were saying just that. He lifts him up yeah. and he cuts him in half. And it's like, that's all you cared about. You didn't, Nothing else in that movie really mattered. Well, there was nothing else going on in life that I cared much about other than, he, you know, it was a very uplifting story. What do you want from me? It was very um, uplifting. <laughs> I did also really like him in The Sandlot, too. I I, th I thought he was pretty great you know, in that movie. I, I remember that a I'll lot be honest, from when I was younger. I watched the, I'll, I'll be honest, uh, when I was little, I watched that movie about... 20 times and i cannot remember it for the life of me i've got to go back and watch that film i don't know why i <laughs> well there you it's go completely a blank slate with that film for some reason i it's, I, it's I, one I, of those movies that it's just easy to slip by you for some reason oh i mean one of his greatest voiceover roles of all time we didn't even mention it maggie simpson from the simpsons <laughs> oh i forgot about that yeah, he had a small I forgot role about that. That's awesome. <laughs> There's just never going to be another voice actor with his presence in our lifetime. No. I, I, not, no not to that degree. I mean, not. To, not that iconic. He was just so wonderful as a person and a human being and a, a great sense of humor, like you said. I'm really proud to be connected to him in any fashion. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we're veterans is pretty freaking cool. In a way, we're Darth Vader, Dan. I don't think that's how it works. That's not? Oh, okay. No. Well, I mean, my heart is black as Vader. Do you need a hug? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to talk about after after a career spanning about 60 years, he has received the National Medal of Arts from President George H.W. Bush, the Kennedy Center Honors from President George W. Bush, 
and the Screen Actors Guild Life Achievement Award. He also achieved EGOT. He's won at least one Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and a Tony, which is, as you can probably imagine, is very challenging. And I'm sure he made Not it look easy somehow. That. Like, this, he, this guy is the OG, like... I don't think there was anything he couldn't do. He's the OG Lynn manuel Miranda. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Just he does everything. I'm so glad he got all the accolades because he deserves them. Again, I hope he does make more content and, and more movies and TV shows and whatever. But at the same time, if he doesn't, uh, retirement is treating him well, I'm sure. And James, if you're listening to this, you are awesome. Thank you for the awesome childhood memories. And thank you for your service. Yeah, and thank you for your service. I got something I wanted to show before we go. Hold on. And he's gone. <laughs> I'm never coming back. It's just you and I. Oh, no. So this is a figure that I've had since I was a kid. And I have put it on my shelf to look at every single day. Funny story about this is my brother was a newborn baby. And I put this in front of him and he cried so hard. <laughs> that I think it scarred him for life. <laughs> sorry, Kobe. Sorry. Not sorry, but I'm sorry. That's, that's uh, awesome. Every day I live with James Earl Jones. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you for watching. Let us know if you have any stories or information about James Earl Jones that you'd like to share. And we would love to talk more about other veterans in the future. And if you have any comments or questions, let us know in the comments below. Thank you for your service to all veterans, including James Earl Jones. And thank you thank for you. doing this with me, Dan. I really enjoyed it. I'm so excited for more Vet Spotlights. Absolutely. I am too. And thank you for having me. And the number one thing that sounds cool when spoken by James Earl Jones... What's up?